Hello. Welcome to my July 2023 report on the electrical systems at our property in Huntingdonshire, England. Here's the usual outline diagram showing the components and you can find further details of them in the description below the video. This first graph shows the electrical energy coming into the property each day from the grid and from our two solar arrays. These figures come from the daily readings of the two solar generation meters and the electricity meter. The total solar production this month was 705 units, an average of 22.8 units per day. The lowest production was just 7.2 units on the 14th and the highest was 39.4 on the 7th. 214 grid units were imported, with two at normal rate and the rest at economy 7 low rate. The car needed a few overnight charges, which will show more clearly on the next graph. The Powerwall was boosted on three nights and on half a dozen other nights was prevented from discharging during the low rate period, so the house took its requirements at that time from the grid. According to the Tesla app, 83.4 units were exported to the grid, which was 9.1% of the total electrical energy coming in and 11.8% of the solar energy produced. Most of that export was while we were away in Cumbria visiting family, missing out on some of the sunniest days of the month at home. The solar contribution to the month's electricity input was 76.7%, a lower figure than usual for the month of July. This second graph shows how the electrical energy reached the property in the car, either directly or via the power wall. The car's home charging figures come from the My Energy app and the Tesla app supplies the rest of the figures. 44.5% of the energy came directly from solar, and a further 28.1% was solar coming via the power wall, giving a total solar contribution to the energy used of 72.5%. Our Zappi charger put just 43.2 solar units into the car, and 173.5 low rate grid units. About 130.5 units were put into the car away from home, some at rapid charges en route to and from Cumbria, and the rest at my brother's house, paying us back for the energy we put into his car last month. The energy to drive the above average 765.8 miles in July cost 5.68 pence per mile. This graph shows the energy going into and coming out of the power wall each day, as reported by the Tesla app. 90.4% of the energy which went into the battery came back out. This is the self-power graph, based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self-power, i.e. energy supplied via the power wall or directly from solar, was 74.9%. And here's the graph showing the solar southwest production over the years since installation. 414 units was by far the worst July over the 12 years, well below the month's new arithmetic mean of 486.5 and the median of 477.5. Here's the cumulative year-to-date graph for the Southwest Array. 2023 has now dropped back from 4th to 7th place out of the 12 years. This graph shows the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The 28-day moving averages finished well below where they were last year, unsurprising. This is the distribution of the energy input and export for the whole of the past year. And this graph shows just the daily solar production for that same period. This final graph shows a summary of our grid electricity usage over the years since our move here in the summer of 2011. The grey and red lines show the number of low rate and normal rate grid units used each month as measured on the left hand scale. And the monthly electricity bill is shown by the yellow line in the right hand scale. And the green line shows the monthly contribution to the feed-in tariff payments for the old Southwest Array's production. This is where I usually leave you with the Tesla app graphs of the month, but I'll first show you the new format that came out with an app update during the month. On the left is the old format and on the right is the new format, with these being the blue home graphs. The graph now stretches across the screen and the areas under the graph are less solidly coloured. Unfortunately, the order of the four graphs has been changed, with the solar and power wall graphs swapping second and third places. This also means that the green power wall section of the stacked graph is now under the solar, 
whereas it was previously above. Generally, more figures are shown in the new format, and on my phone's quite small screen, I would have to scroll the screen up to see all the figures on the power wall and grid pages. However, I don't have to do that to see the figures I require, and transfer of energy from the power wall to the grid, for example, should always be zero in my case. That's all for now. I'll now leave you with the Tesseract graphs for each day of July, with a change of format mid-month, followed by some low-flying swallows, and hope to see you again next month.